Okay, hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how to build the castle assembly with realistic firing and camera panning. So, I'm going to show you today how to do something like this. So for IED Tobin's class, we have to build the castle and so on the and animate it. So here we are. We have I have my castle assembly. This is my version of it. And if you haven't seen already, you'll have to make some kind of catapult or he has you do a cannon, but I made a trebuchet. And make it fire. Oops. Oh my goodness gracious. And break the wall of the castle. So, to start off, let's open up the basic castle assembly in a new presentation file. So we'll close this. No, I don't want to save changes. So new, standard IPN, presentation, create. Alright, so first you're going to want to create view, and you have to do this with your pre-built castle assembly. Okay, come on. There we go. So I will go, let's see, this one. Come on. I'll wait for Inventor not to respond. Skip all. Okay. So now we should have our assembly. See, there we go. Alright. Oh my god. Why are you doing this to me? Hang on. Okay, so there we go. Uh, sorry about that. The first thing you have to do is figure out how we're going to pan this camera. So, if we animate it, it doesn't do anything right now because we haven't tweaked the components. So to do that, you click a component, so components, click something, and then click the direction. So, say I wanted to lift up the drawbridge on the right axis, I'd put it there, then do rotational, because I want it to rotate along the axis, and it's going this way, so 90 degrees, let's try that. Okay, so that lifted up the drawbridge, but not the trains, but that's right, so I'm not really trying to do that right now. So we'll just go clear, close, and animate. So let's speed it up a little, 10. So you see that opens and closes the drawbridge. So that's how you animate something. Let me just undo that. So, whoops, my drawbridge isn't open like that. Okay, but what if you want to animate things in sequence? Well, then we'll go to Actually, let's just redo that drawbridge thing. Okay. So then, say I want to move this portcullis down. I'll do tweak components again. Components. Portcullis. And then I'll choose the direction. There. And so Z is highlighted. It's blue, which means it's going to move down, which is the way I want it to. And this time I don't want it to rotate. I just want it to go down. See, this is what would happen if I rotated it. So I don't want that undo, but I do want it to go down. So there we go. So I know mine is about 70 inches, so I'm going to go down, and that shut it just nicely. All right. So now we close this and animate. Let's see what happens. So that'll go up, and that'll go down. So that looks right, but say I wanted to have my portcullis go up after this. You open this thing here, and it shows you the sequence. So portcullis, drawbridge. So you reset it. Drawbridge, we can move this here. After, oops, move up. Oops, yeah. Apply, and now, when you click play, the drawbridge goes down, and then the portcullis goes up. Or, if you wanted to go down and up, the portcullis would go down, and the drawbridge would go up. So, now you know how to animate things, and in the next video, I'll show you how to pan the camera.
Okay, so last video we saw how to make things move in the cast in the uh, castle assembly. So you'll see here I got rid of the keep just for simplicity's sake because we have to break this wall. Here you can see the bunch of little pieces. So we're going to make the camera move around without using this view cube here. So the first thing you have to do, which is often forgotten and people are super frustrated because they can't figure it out, is this thing right here. This little thing is the most important part of the camera. You click it and do sequence view, not assembly view, not tweak view. You do sequence view and that will display the views of each part in sequence. So if we do our animations again, hang on, I'll just show, do this quick. Okay, so we're, I'm back. So here we animated a bunch of stuff. This little church door here, both the portcullises and the drawbridge. So we get to, let's see what it looks like. Move this out of the way. So the drawbridge goes up. Can't really see that portcullis goes down. And then here the other one goes down. And then, okay. This church door opens up. Okay. So, we have that. Let's, ugh. let's see if this camera angle can be manipulated without just <laughs> messing it up like that. So, we start by, as you did before, opening this up, setting it to sequence view. And so see this task one? All these sequences, great hall door, are each in a task. So we have to assign, okay, they're already done. So each sequence is already in a task. So this will actually be pretty easy. If it's not, if they're all in different tasks, you can do explosion one, whoops, hang on. What? Cancel. Explosion one, create a task, and that'll give you another one. But right now, it's fine if they're all in a task. We expand that. Whoops. And then for each one, sequence one, great hall door, we can choose a camera view. So, let's see if we can, can't get this uh, to look just, whoop, just the way we want. Okay. Go down. Hang on. What the heck? Okay, so I got the view right the way we want it for this. So we go sequence one, edit. You can change the interval, so we'll maybe make it a little faster, 10. And then set camera, and it'll set the camera to the current one, apply. So we close that, go back to the home view. Now we press animate. It'll move the camera there, but then it'll stay there for the rest of it because it's already there. So that'll go, and the rest of it will play as we watch. So we can do that for each one. We get the camera to the right spot, and, all right, so here's our view for the portcullis, this one. So we'll do, oops, this sequence, you left click, or right click on sequence, edit, make it 10 also and then set the camera for this, okay. And then we'll zoom out a bit, whoops. And find the view for the other port color, where we'll animate this. And port color sequence three, edit, 10 again, set camera, okay. And then find the view for the drawbridge, that looks good, sequence four, Edit, 10, all right. Oops, we didn't set the camera. So you gotta make sure you set the camera for that. Okay, and now we'll see the culmination of our efforts. So, play, okay, that shuts, opens up, switches the view around, opens up, and switches that. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so for simplicity's sake, I've started with a cannon to show you how to make the ball fly through the air 
realistically. So there's our cannon. And hang on. Let's see. Whoops. And uh, if you can see, there's a ball in there somewhere. There we are. Whoops. Gosh. Uh, hang on. There we are. There's our ball inside our cannon. So we're going to want to make it go in an arc because the cannon will shoot the ball over the wall in an arc and hit here. So first thing that I didn't show you is you actually have to make a bunch of parts. So this wall, all these walls are solid except for this one. You can see where I cut this out and I did this pretty elaborately. I made, I think, about nine parts. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. You, you get the point. So anyway, before, bef the easy way to do that is take your wall assembly, save it as a new file, and then cut out whatever shape you want your cannon to blow out the parts, and then slowly fill it in with different parts, and each one saving as a new file. So, once you've done that, you can tweak components and get your cannon Let's see if we can get our cannon ball there and then direction so we want it to be Z, that's right, but it's pointing this way back out the other side of our cannon, so we're going to make our distance negative negative. and let's see, let negative 100, see what that does whoops that's shoot that's taking the whole cannon. So hang on a second. We'll try this again by just getting our cannonball and then making the direction okay negative one hundred. Let's try and just get the cannonball here. Okay. Okay, so our cannonball shot out a little bit. Hang on. There. So, okay. Now if we animate that, our cannonball, whoops, is going out. So you might have to play this backwards, depending on the order. So let's make it shoot out a little faster than that. Ten. So, it shoots out of our cannon. Boom. But that's just going in a straight line out of the cannon. And there actually is gravity in this so-called castle world that we're having. So it's going to shoot out in an arc. But we also have to make it so it'll clear the wall. So let's reset that. And then if you do something wrong, you can delete this and it'll go right back. Oh, I'm not really sure what's going on with this scrolling thing. It'll go right back into its little cannon hole. So how do we think we're going to make it travel in an arc? Well, we saw earlier with the drawbridge and the, uh, the church door that you can rotate things. So we're going to do tweak components, zoom in on this, and get the cannonball. Click that, and now we're going to rotate it, and this is going to take some trial and error, some kind of playing around with it, but we're going to rotate it around an axis on the ground. So let's just go direction. Let's just say the axis of this wall there. So Z. We'll rotate it around Z. Negative uh, 90 degrees. Let's see what that looks like. So that makes a little a cannon shooting up in an arc. And this will look better on the trebuchet. But for, the, for right now we're just going to do the cannon. And don't mind that it's not um, that it's ghosting through the cannon. We'll just you just have to angle up the cannon more. So that's going to be about it for this video. And let's see if we can see before I run out of time. So yeah, there we have it, sh traveling in a more realistic arc than it would be. And we can tweak this in the next video. Here we have our cannon, and, oh, okay, 
So we're going to move our cannonball and keep playing around with this arc here to see if we can get it just right. So let's try since ah since this outside part didn't work here, let's try the inside. Right there. So 90 degrees and so now we're making it well over the wall. We might want to angle the cannon up a little bit more. And let's see. F keep going on the arc. 120. How about 180? That's a little too far. And 160. How about? There we go. So it looks like we're going to fall short. Pardon these random spastic maneuverings. I don't know why it's doing this to me. So, looks like we're going to fall a little short and hit the base of the wall. Which I wanted to hit here, because this is where I segmented my wall, as so it'll look like it breaks up. So, we'll close that, undo, and undo again, until our cannon gets back in there. Oh, and it looks like our cannon is jammed into the ground. So, let's go into the assembly file, have it up here, and move our cannon so that it's not, for one, jammed into the ground. Hang on. Move this up. Let's also get the boulder there so it's a little bit more straight. So move that up, if it'll work. Alright then, I'll just do this. This sometimes is weird because the relationships between them, but for our purposes it'll work. Move it. That looks about good if it'll shoot like that. Okay. Save this. No. And it will pop up in our presentation file. So now our cannon should be looking decently. Maybe it's this. Maybe if I move that a little. Will it? No, it doesn't help. Okay. Uh, so our cannon should be shooting it decently towards this right area. Let me just get it the right view here. Okay, so we tweak components, get our cannonball, direction, have this, Z, oh wait, we already tried that, so, sorry about that. Let's try a little lower, since that's going too high. We'll move this around, try this B here. So we've, we'll do our direction first. The direction is this B that line there, and components are the cannonball. Now, let's see. 120. Okay, well, that we just overshot, so we missed. So if you look, we have 350. This really is what it's showing, is this is the center of the circle that your cannon is going to shoot it at. So, if we put it here, our arc is going to be a little bit too big, because it's making a circle It's going around there. But when we put it back the other place, there, our circle is maybe like this. So you just have to play around with it and see when, how long it'll, or see if you can get it to hit right in the right spot. And this may require moving your cannon a little bit, or you can always, once you find the right spot, you can always make a little tiny rectangle so you'll have some straight lines in the bottom or wherever you need to put it and then you can use those as the reference point for the arc. So once you figure that out you can break your wall. Get on to breaking your wall which I'll show in the next video.
Right. So here I've got my castle assembly. There we go. It always flips out when I do the video. Here's my trebuchet that I built, which it's basic. It's a pretty basic construction. You can kind of research trebuchets and see how they work. But it's got the two bases here, which hold it up. A big counterweight, which it's full of rocks, but or whatever, some weighty thing, which pulls on the end. It's basically just a big lever. This thing, because of gravity, pulls on the end, causing the end or causing the other end to fling out fast, which has this little net attached, and it'll fling whatever is in the net at great speed and distance. So when we play it, you see my castle. This is kind of what I built. So, it doesn't have the camera panning, but I'm sure you'll be able to see in a sec. So, let's pause. So, that opened that up, and now we have the trebuchet. So, you go back. So, it starts off like this. Then the counterweight is released. Let me reset this. Turn down the interval so you can see. Go, go. So those go. So now, let's look at this trebuchet from a side view. So this pulls this, which the net will fling out, and then fling the ball out of it. So what I did with this is all I did was have the ball up here in the trebuchet and then did what I showed you earlier. I did um, the tweak components and an angle or an arc and so it makes the arc go up and land right there. So let's see. So there's the ball in the air and while you notice the trebuchet is still going forwards and this is coming down and normally it would be a piece of cloth, but obviously there's no fabric material in Inventor that actually behaves like fabric. So the balls come in and it's in the air. It's about to hit there, so we zoom in. It hits this. and these all break off. So why this looks so decent, or so good I guess, is that it has a lot of pieces. So it, you can do this as, in, in as few pieces as you want, but the, be the more pieces you have of shrapnel, to a certain extent, the better it will look. So we keep going. So the ball falls through the castle, but that's, that's alright, because it would be falling through. So it breaks this castle part here, and then these pieces the key is to make them not all fall in the same direction. And you kind of, whoops, you kind of want them to fall a little bit randomly. So, see how they all spread out and are all in different places as they're falling? That's because, let's see. So, I'll reset this and I'll show you the trails. So, see all these? These are the little animations. So, I'll go like this and visibility. And so then you can see what those things actually are showing. And you can do this the other way around if, you, if your thing is full of little blue lines that you can hide the visibility by just selecting them all in the sequence and turning off the visibility or turning it on of the trails. So see these trails, how kind of sporadic they are? That makes it look realistic. So it hits the, the ball hits it and it's got all these random little trails which you do by just doing tweak component pick a direction and then go for a little bit in that direction and then change it change the direction by tweaking the component again in a different direction by ro you so you tweak the component in a certain direction rotate it tweak it again in a different direction rotate it again and then move it again until it hits the ground and it's satisfactorily random.
So in this final video, I'll show you how to make the trebuchet look somewhat realistic. So now you've seen how to make all these blocks fall out of the wall pretty realistically. So the ball hits them and they all explode out of the wall and you have to remember to play this a couple of times and then save it once it looks good and then keep playing it until you, it takes a lot of tweaking and editing and kind of trial and error is the main thing with this. You move it and if that looks good okay you keep that and then move on to the next one. This takes quite a while to make it look right. So here we focus on the trebuchet with it looks like a lot of lines but really it's a pretty simple path. So you start out by selecting these things all the parts of the trebuchet that have to move. So these base parts and this peg don't really have to move but they have to move along a certain axis of rotation which is this one right here. So you you click the animate button where is this? Uh, here we go. So animate. We play. So you select all of them if we were doing this, components, click all these things, and let's see this, and that string there. Okay, and now we'd click direction. We want the center of this thing, and we'd spin it around, let's see, 10. So now all the, er, let's do a little bit more, 30. So now all these things are going to move that way which this is just to show you how it works and so you do that I think this one was about 120, 130 degrees you have to experiment as I said it's a lot of trial and error so you move those but now hang on this, does, this doesn't look right why is this counterweight splayed out like that it's, it's supposed to stay flat so at this time you have to also rotate the counterweight. So we'll do tweak components. Whoops, that's not right. Close. Tweak components, the counterweight, and then this peg, and then the direction is the axis of this peg. And how many did we do? 30. So we want to do, let's see, what's the z-axis going? Rotational. And so we're going to do 30. Whoops, not 90. 30. Okay. So that looks right. Now this thing is still upright. But how are we going to do this at the same time? So, let's see. Here's our little thing that we did. So, uh, it's plain. Let's skip forward a little bit. Okay, so we go, go, go. Go. Wait till we get to our part that we just built. So, here we go. Back. So we play it. So right now they're not going at the same time, which we want them to go at the same time to make it look realistic. So we click reset, and we select all these things. See two and three? This is the order. And we group it together. Now we apply, and we play. So now our trebuchet arm is moving forward with this counterweight right here, how it would really move. So if you want to see how we move the net here, I'm going to undo all our things that we did there. Okay. Oops. And I'll show you. Sorry, it's how to do the net. So here you select these these components, tweak components, and I'm running out of time here, so I might have to make another video. Sorry, I know I said it was the final one. And we do rotational, and then this one you kind of have to eyeball because there's no real axis that we built. So do, I guess just there looks good, and say 30 again. So now, whoops, we click this thing, which is not what we wanted. So let's fix that mistake, but in the next video. Alright, so 
Hang on. There. So that's what we had in the previous thing. I just undid it. So for the net, we want to pick the string and the net, both sides, but not this part. Then change the direction, say about there, and do 30 degrees. So now our net is moving, moving along an axis. So see what that looks like. Animate. So our net is actually ghosting through this, which we don't want. But how we get it to look right, because it's cloth in the real, real life, but in Inventor, obviously, it isn't. And so Inventor can't really process that. So the net will go through, and it kind of has to go in stages, because it just... So we're watching this backwards right now. It'll look kind of cool. It's like, oh, catch the ball. But anyway, so gums forward, catches it. So from beginning to end, the net kind of travels a long way because it's being whipped around by centrifugal force in this ball. So oh, the net flies out. So it doesn't move a whole lot from where it is. This one, this one you want to basically have the strings taut because that's what it would be like in normal life with centrifugal force. So we play it. And then once it lets go of the ball, then we have to actually make it look different. So it's starting to move, and then the ball drops off, and it goes a little bit further, and then we have to make an arc, which we did right there. We make the arc, and so the net goes around until it hits this thing, and this will start to swing back because the counterweight wants to go down. And so the net is going to move out again there. And then as it swings back the other way, because it's a pendulum, it's going to go tick-tock, tick-tock until the counterweight stops totally. So if you want it to look really good, you slowly make it go less and less. But I didn't have a whole ton of time, so I only did three movements. And then it stops. And then there's our little last thing with the net. So it's pretty simple. Overall, you just have to make it look like it would in real life. So when doing this, I watched I don't know how many videos of trebuchets firing to see what the net actually looked like. And I think that's really the only way you can do it to make it look the way it is. So, and there's a lot of trial and error. So anyway, but the basic steps are you, let's reset this. So, you have your trebuchet unloading on the castle, and you have to remember there is gravity, and physics apply, even though they don't really apply in Inventor, but you're trying to make it look like they do. So this thing's falling down, pulling the net, our ball launches out, which you saw how to do earlier with the angling thing, and our net is swinging around, Hitting the, ca hitting the trebuchet as it moves around and then the net goes and stops there, ideally. But we messed it up with this, this thing here, but that is how you do the trebuchet and the net. So there you have it. Now, once you combine all those things together, breaking the wall, swinging the trebuchet, panning around the camera, and animating the things in sequences, you can make your castle have a pretty cool video that looks relatively realistic. So, as you saw in the beginning. So, here we go. This should be the final product. Doors going down. Drawbridge is lifted up. Trebuchet fires. Shoots the ball, which breaks the castle wall. And the trebuchet goes back to its normal position. And there you have it. That's how you animate the castle and succeed in <laughs> Mr. Tobin's class as far as the castle unit goes.